it's time for Cooking Up Advice with Dr. June. Now here's Dr. June. And welcome to Cooking Up Advice with Dr. June, where we cook up a dish and we dish out advice. I'm your host, Dr. June, and I'm so happy that you joined us today. And so many times people say to me, Dr. June, how did you get into the advice giving business? Well, I tell them that I was an advice columnist for several years, almost 15 years. And they're like, well, how did you even start doing that? Well, as a child, I always loved Dear Abby and Ann Landers, and I'm like, I want to do that. So I was temping at actually a newspaper, and I contacted the managing editor, and I started going on about how I want to be an advice columnist and the whole nine yards, and he said, stop. Wait a minute, who are you again? And I said, I'm June Hall. You didn't know? <laughs> so he was really nice, though, and he gave me the opportunity, and I became syndicated, and now away from the newspaper, I'm giving advice to you on air. So I'm so happy about that and my ladies of loveliness who you will meet later on in the show will also dish out advice with me. We have from season four of MasterChef Junior, Mr. Zach Cara, who's going to cook up our dish and my good friend Samantha. We're going to broach a serious subject which is bullying and when you see her you're like how could someone who looks like that be a victim of bullying? But that's what we want to talk about because it comes in all forms and fashion. We also have from Still Wind Productions, Tiffany Edwards and her husband, R. Anthony, from season five of The Voice. So we're super excited to find out what they have been up to. I can't forget my afters. Hi, afters! Woo! So glad you're here. And now to answer the question that I'm asked all the time. What is time to apt? What is aptatious? Is that really a word? Yes, aptatious is really a word. Okay, maybe not to Merriam Webster, <laughs> but to us apters, we know that it's real. Because APT stands for accentuate positive thinking. So you have apt, aptatious, just like you have happy and happiness. And so, just like our theme song, the actors know if we hold on, everything will be all right. So, we want you to also be an actor and be a part of our show. Hit us up on social media, and then you're going to join us. Let's dish. <laughs> Hey there, Zach. How are you? I'm good. I'm like impressed. Look at that. Okay, so we're here with Zach Cara from Zach Cara. Am I pronouncing it right? Yep, that's perfect. Awesome. From season four of Master Chef Junior. So I don't know. How old are you now? I'm 14 now. All right. Can you still be considered Master Chef Junior, or do they not let you on at 14? Um, they don't let you on. The, the age limit is 13, and I've oh. grown like almost a foot since I'm. Oh place. my god. Yeah. It totally is. Oh my god. You look fabulous. Thank okay. You. So. Before we get started yep. on learning more about you, tell me what you are preparing for us today. All right, so when I found out I was gonna be on your show, I wanted to do something completely original. And so this dish is just for you. So what I've done is a pan seared bronzino, which is a sea bass, with a creamy butternut squash puree. But what really makes this dish is this really weird sauce I came up with. Okay. It's a blackberry licorice and jalapeno reduction. I'm as crazy as it sounds, there's just going to be like this tiny little bit on the puree, but it adds this like incredible flavor to the whole dish and it just takes it over the top. What's in the pot? All right, so in the pot right now, this is our butternut squash puree. So whenever you're making a puree with vegetables, you always want to cook it in milk and heavy cream because it adds like this really nice creaminess and you never want to cook it in water because then it starts like separating. Oh, wow. Yeah. You're really smart. <laughs> Thank you. 
you know, Zach was on MasterChef Junior season four. So, you know, obviously he's a really good cook. Okay, I'm excited about that. All right, so tell me how you came up with this creative dish for Cooking Up Advice with Dr. June. We're honored. Oh, this, this took me a little while to uh, think of because I really, because first I was settled on chicken, but I'm like, chicken's kind of boring. And then I wanted to do steak, but then I'm like, I, I mean, I like, I really like steak. Mm -hmm. But then I'm like, I gotta go with something different. I really like seafood, so that was brilliant. That was a good move, see? <laughs> we have like a psychic connection, I think. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so then I decided to go with a bronzino because that's one of my favorite fishes. Mm -hmm. And I didn't want to do like salmon or something because I'm not the, the biggest fan of salmon. Mm -hmm. So that's how I decided to do a the protein, but then okay. uh, with the purees and the other condiments, well, that was kind of weird. I don't know how I came up with the blackberry sauce, but then the, the butternut squash puree is delicious. It's really creamy, and it adds like this beautiful kind of creaminess throughout the, the uh, dish. And so these, and these are... carrots. So these are some carrots that I trimmed up earlier just to make them look really nice, and we're gonna blanch them and make a little glaze that's on them too. pretty. Yeah. And then the other thing that's kind of unusual is Take a guess what these are. Uh, garnish? Those are the leaves of the carrot. No way. Are, yeah. are you going to use those with the meal? I am. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to blanch them really quickly, and then I'm going to cook them in a little pan with some butter and salt and pepper, and they actually taste really delicious, as crazy as that people sounds. people eat that. Um, I, I don't think people usually eat, eat it, but it is edible. Wow. Now I'm really super excited. Okay, so you're going to make the sea bass. Is that what yeah, the fish correct. is? Okay, and after you make the sea bass, you're going to put it on top of the butternut, butternut squash? Yeah, I'm gonna do a nice little swish of the butternut squash puree and then the vegetables will be on the side. We also have some uh, maitake mushrooms, some peas, which I'm gonna blanch up. Mm -hmm. And then we also have a grapefruit foam on top of the fish. Zach, and you're killing it today. I know, I right? love seafood and <laughs> I you. love grapefruit. Grapefruit, really? I am a total grapefruit wow. fan. I'm yeah, you're killing it today. <laughs> Definitely. You have like a psychic connection Definitely. because like the thing is I don't oh. even like grapefruit are that you much. Serious? But I decided to use it. Oh my god, that's brilliant. What are the chances? What are the chances? So what we're going to do is I'm going to let you finish All right, this. Sounds good. We're gonna go to break and then we're going to see the delicious dish that you put together. Don't tell the ladies I got to taste it first. Don't worry, I won't. Shh. Thank you. We'll be right back and we're going to see what Zach has put together for us. You don't want to miss Zach's plating of the dish and his future plan. Find out when we come back from the break. And we are super excited to be back with Zach and this delicious meal that he has planned for us. First, I want to say thank you because you made crispy skin. No worries. Some people don't like that, but I like crispy skin. <laughs> yeah, I actually used to just peel the skin right off and just mm -hmm. discard it. But once you make it crispy, it actually tastes really good and it adds like this beautiful, almost sort of crunched to the whole yes. dish. Yes, so it gives it like some extra flavor in yeah, my opinion. So while you are plating for us, yeah. I'm going to ask you some questions. Sure. We want to know all things Zach. All right. Like, what has he been doing since MasterChef Junior? I've been filming a couple series. One of them was just an amazing one. So it's going to be a six episode cooking series on my YouTube channel mm -hmm. that uh, I'll be posting showing people how to make two simple dishes, two medium dishes, and then two hard dishes. And it's honestly just an incredible right. series, just teaching people how to make delicious food. Cause that's what it's, for me, that's what it's, it's right. all about. Anyway. Well, you know, I'm going to make the simple dishes. All right. That sounds good. <laughs> and it's actually also going to come with a free mini cookbook too, mm -hmm. which is really good. So. Oh, that's exciting. So you're this is going to be your first cookbook. It is. And it's actually been a, dr a dream of mine too. So it's pretty surreal. Wow. Now it is coming to fruition. Okay, now tell me, this is the butternut squash, yes, this and is this is the... The blackberry jalapeno and licorice reduction. Oh my God. As insane as that sounds. That sounds insane, and I'm like super excited to try it. Okay, now there's something else, Zach, that we yeah. know about you. Tennis player. 
Do you still play tennis? I do still play tennis. And it's always something that I'll love. But I've been injured kind of on and off, so I've had to take some breaks here and there. Mm -hmm. But I'm really starting to try to get, to get back into it and just get really healthy. Well, you know what? If tennis doesn't work out for you because you are tall and slender and handsome, you can always do modeling. That is a good option, too. Okay, let's think about this. We have Zach the chef, All right. Zach the author, Zach, the tennis player and potential model. <laughs> I love it. Okay, so now you're putting on the carrots. Yep, so these are the glazed carrots that I made earlier. Mm. And then next is the snap snap peas. Oh, those are snap peas. <laughs> okay. And then we also have the carrot leaves I mentioned okay. earlier. Is this like something you have to learn how to plate food? It's honestly, it's just looking at a lot of pictures and, and it's just experience and learning it, but, but it's what I love to do, so. Oh, wow. That's amazing. That is amazing. This is very exciting. Okay, now, yeah. you know that we are all about being aptatious, accentuating yeah. positive thinking, mm -hmm. and you seem to be pretty positive. Did you inherit that from your mom? Uh, yeah, my mom and dad are actually extremely positive when it comes to just going the way of life. It's just mm -hmm. being you basically and not worrying about what other people think. That's so that's great. also kind of influenced me. But then I also get a lot of messages on social media uh, mm -hmm. saying like, hey, like you really inspired me to cook and it's truly an amazing feeling. Wow. So this is the quinoa. Yes, this is the quinoa I made earlier. We have the bronzino. And that is Beautiful. It's beautiful. Perfect. That looks good. So your parents are positive. Yeah. Give us a tip on you staying positive. It's just who I am. Like I, the only time I get angry is if I'm very hungry or if I'm very tired. So we found out that Zach is a regular teenager. <laughs> and I love to play video games too. Hey, oh, there you go. Ding, ding, ding. Thank you so much. Okay, when we come back, we're going to talk to Samantha and later our ladies of loveliness are going to sit at the table and dish. I think your mom is going to join us. Maybe. Woohoo! We'll be right back. Everything's gonna be Everybody stand up. It's gonna be all right. Welcome back to Cooking Up Advice. And with us now, we have Samantha, my good friend, who is going to talk to us about bullying. And I know that some people say to me, are you talking about this person as someone who's a victim of bullying? And that is why she's here today, because it comes in all forms, shapes, and sizes. Hi, Samantha. Hi, thank you for having me today. No, thank you for coming. <laughs> we would like to know your experience with being a victim of bullying. So the type of bullying that I experienced was different category of body shaming. Mm -hmm. And that was because I was considered underweight. Mm -hmm. So during my middle school to high school years, I experienced this very often. And it was a type of attack that I didn't know how to reach out to people because I was in fear of rejection from either close friends or family because they're like, oh no, you're beautiful, you're this, you're that. Right. You shouldn't have that issue. Right. So, um, you know, the different types of comments that I would get were very harsh and it would be, you know, people would call me anorexic or they would snicker when I would just walk to the restroom. And with that sort of body shaming, you would think that, oh, it shouldn't be a problem. But to other people out there, it is a problem because they, one, it's something that's not common. Right. And two, they don't know who to go to. You know, we've talked before and you said that when you went to your family and friends, they would be like, well, what are you talking about? You're a pretty girl, you're slender, no pimples, not a geek, <laughs> not overweight. Are you a geek? I don't know. Yeah. Sometimes. <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> not overweight. And so then they're like, you know, what are you talking about that people are picking at you? Right, right. So what did you do to kind of overcome this situation? So what I did is I found an inner strength. Mine necessarily was my faith in Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. So whatever, you know, that young boy or that young girl, whatever their strength is, if they can adhere to that would be the most important because once I found that strength, mm -hmm. it made me get up each day and mine per se was putting my shoes on, mm -hmm. my heels. Mm -hmm. That is where 
I found my strength. And that's because my mom, she knows, she's like, oh, you're a young girl, you're, you're skinny, you know, let's put you into modeling and, you know, try to make a positive aspect of this. Right, right. So I put on my heels one day and I was like, you know what, I know people are going to make their comments, I know people are going to be harsh, but I'm just going to put on my heels and I'm just going to walk on. I have to say this, though. I have heard other models you know, faces. A lot of people think, oh, they're, you know, supermodel, they're pretty, they're slender. But many of them have said in the past that when they were younger, because they were too tall or because they were too thin, that they also had body shaming. So this is not as uncommon as you may think. And I believe that parents should look at their children, have a conversation with them and determine, okay, is my child withdrawing? Is my child uncomfortable with going to school? And then look and see if perhaps they are a victim of bullying. Yes, absolutely. So talk about what you're doing now, Miss I'm Wearing My Heels. <laughs> <laughs> so I still continue to put my heels on and um, I do find different gigs, photo shoots, things like that. And when I do work with other models, I just try to share my little testimony with them and I try to explain to them, you know, you're beautiful no matter what you look like overweight, underweight, you know, you're just as beautiful, young boys and girls. Right. And some people don't realize that boys also have that problem also. Yeah, um, being slim or, you know, maybe with their hair being too long or something like that. And they also can be anorexic. Mm -hmm. But, you know, they fall victim to what, you know, others are saying about them. Yeah, because they're not a girl per se. Maybe they don't get bullied, but they right. fall into that yeah. uncommon but common category of right. the body shaming as well right i'm so happy that you came to <laughs> share your story with Me us too. Me too. and as i mentioned earlier if you have some concerns or want more information about bullying please visit my website which is junehall.com we will be back in just a moment and we're going to go to the audience for some q and a i'm going to see what kind of advice that i can give to them Thank you so much. We'll see you in a minute. And we're back to answer some questions from our studio audience. Who has a question for Dr. June? Hi, June. Hi. Hello. Who are you? My name's Pat. Here, Pat. Oh, thank you. <laughs> and then, you know, that's my sister's name, so we're like family. Aww. So tell me what your question is. Um, I have a daughter who's transitioning from a teen to a young adult, and she's leaving the nest, and I don't know how to let her go. She's my baby. Aww. Mm -hmm. Okay, here's the bottom line. She is always going to be your baby. You're always going to carry her in your heart the way you carried her for nine months mm -hmm. or eight or ten or however long <laughs> it took. But you have to remember this. You know how you grew up? and you moved on with your life and you you know had a fam started a family of your own think about that with your daughter and also think about the values that you taught her and you have yeah. to trust that she will remember those yeah that's good advice thank you dr june has given good advice <laughs> thank you so much okay we'll see later we're going to talk with our ladies of loveliness and see if they agree and they may even have some more advice for you okay great thank you pat thank you dr june who else has a question oh i see someone showing their fingers hi hi and you are ardina nice to meet you ardina nice to meet you. i'm dr june so what is your question I'm just wondering what advice you might have for me as a mature woman. At the age of 54, I made a huge career change. Mm -hmm. And I'm not quite sure it was a very good decision. Well, you know, 54 and as gorgeous as you are, you don't even have to tell people the truth about your age. But at 54, that's the new 44. So, you know, that's fine. But now you're in a career you're saying that you don't like anymore? I'm not sure it's exactly the career that I thought it was going to be. I see. Well, I'm going to say this. You still have time to make another decision. I know someone, she changed careers every 10 years. When she was 40, she changed her career. When she was 50, she changed her career. And when she was 60, she changed her career. So being that you're not even 60 yet and you have multiple years to retirement, I think that if you're unhappy, you should make the decision to go and do something that you feel will make you happy. Thank you. You're welcome. I'll take you up on that. Awesome. <laughs> okay, it seems like we have Time for one more question. 
I see a young lady at the end. I'm gonna scoot by. Hi, gorgeous ladies. Hi. How are you? Good, how are you? I'm great, thank you. Hi. And you might be? My name is um, Nyree Milton. Hi, Nyree, I'm doing great. How are you? I'm doing good. My question is, I just recently graduated from college um, and I decided to move back home with my mom. And so my question is, how do I get her to um, maybe be more open to treating me as an adult as I've been gone? I see. <laughs> well, first of all, congratulations on your graduation. Thank you. Okay, well, here's the deal. Have you even talked to your mom about your situation? I have not. You know what, communication is key. So you may want to say to her that I love and appreciate you. I'm glad of your support that, you know, I was able to graduate from college and I'm glad that I'm able to come back home and, you know, start my life, my professional career. But because I've been away on my own, you know, for a few years, it's kind of difficult for me to get back into the swing of things where you are now, you know, in control again. So what can we work out? And maybe you can, you know, collaborate or work on a compromise. But if she doesn't know how you feel, then she doesn't understand how you feel. You get what I'm saying? So try talking to her and see how it works out. Okay, I'm going to give it a go. Give it a whirl. <laughs> well, we will be back, but I want to say that I am appreciative of my audience sending in, asking their questions, and you are welcome to send in your questions. Hit us up on social media, and we will answer your questions while we sit at the table and dish with the lovely ladies and see what kind of advice that we can offer to you. When we come back, we will sit down with Tiffany Edwards from Steel Wind Production and her husband, R. Anthony, from Season 5 The Boys. They will tell us about their current and future projects. Picking up advice, we'll be right back. And we're back with our favorite guest, Tiffany Edwards from Steel Wind Production and her husband, R. Anthony, who was on season five of The Voice. When I dream of you, the sweetest dream will never do. I still miss you, baby, and I don't Now here's a little tidbit that you did not know about our Anthony, and that is he actually wrote and performs our theme song on his new CD. Super excited! <laughs> Thank you all for being yeah, here. Yeah, thanks for our having pleasure. us. Absolutely. Yes. So tell us about Still Wind Productions. I don't know which one of you started. You started together, or yeah, we started together. It was started on um, 2011, and it was actually just from the place of wanting to step out and create a platform for other people in the area. We have so much talent here in Tampa, and um, it's we just wanted to bring that talent to the stage. So we did it and, and things have taken off and we're just grateful to have this production company, yeah. So you do it, are you a live production? Yes, stage okay. plays, yes. Oh wow, yes. that's yes. exciting. It is. This is a female Tyler Perry. Oh my God. <laughs> Tyleria. <laughs> yeah. I love it. I love it. Yeah. So tell us about some of the productions that you've already put together. We've so far we've done three productions. Um, one was called Everyone's Familiar with Sex in the City. Mm -hmm. um, so we changed it up and it was Saved in the City and we talked about instead of four girls, we talked about four guys. Oh, wow. And their, you know, their relationship issues and perks and you know, just all that good stuff. And we brought it in 2011. We did Saved in the City one and then we came back and did two. And we also submitted to Washington DC's theater festival and it got accepted and we flew the whole cast there So wow. we've been doing some good things. So we're excited. You have also won awards. Don't try to be modest <laughs> <laughs> Tell us about those awards. We have an award winner here. <laughs> um, it's just, I'm just blessed to be, um, you know, for people to acknowledge the work that I've done. So no boasting there. I'm just grateful for the awards. Yeah. Wow. Just community and leadership and, right. yeah. So talk about the rewards, the uh, awards yeah. though. Yes. Talk about it. Tell us about them. What, what were they? Well, I've, I did receive, um, oh, 
Wow, um, Best Female Actress in the Community by Best in the Bay. This was the people's choice. So what happens with Best in the Bay, you, um, you put it out there and people actually go and vote for you. So when I, I was actually in acting class, so I, I couldn't even, I wasn't even there to receive their award and everyone called and they were like, Tiffany, you just received the award of Best in the Bay. So I'm just very grateful that, you know, that my work on stage is appreciated. Yeah. Well, it should be. Yeah. I have to say that this is not just today. She all always looks this great. <laughs> I'm trying to catch her off guard. It hasn't happened. <laughs> Thank you. You're too kind. So tell us about being on The Voice. What was that like? So The Voice was just a, it's really an amazing experience mm -hmm. to see all of, first of all, for 40,000 people to audition wow. and to be in the top 40 chosen for mm -hmm. the show, is mm -hmm. um, it takes your confidence mm -hmm. level to a whole nother level. Um, and then it, it makes you appreciate, you know, the gift that you have. Because so. you have an amazing voice. Uh, you know, I'm thankful. Yeah. I, I come up uh, out of a family of singers mm -hmm. and um, I never really had the confidence as a, as a kid coming up to, to do something like that. In yeah. fact, I hate competitions because I hate rejection. <laughs> yeah. So, um, Who does? You, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, you know, and, but, but for me to get on that show, it was definitely a boost of confidence. Mm -hmm. And it just made me feel like you really can do what you put your mind to. Right, yeah, if right. you believe in yourself, right, you really can yeah. take yourself further than you've ever imagined going. And you have now, you know, put together, produced a CD. Mm -hmm. And are you working on another one from what I I you know what? The music yeah. is my <laughs> music is my life. Music is my life. Yeah. It's, it's all I do. I, I yeah. love music. Music is inspirational to me. Yeah. And when you can lace uh, an inspirational an inspirational message with a dope beat. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you can really make uh, makes bring joy into people's lives, right. especially when they feel like they can relate to your story. So I, I love guess. your CD. Thank you know, you. I was first in line. I was like, yes, you, what? yes, you were. <laughs> yeah, I appreciate that. I appreciate that. But it, it's definitely a way to tell your story. Mm -hmm. To me, it's therapy when someone can relate to my story and appreciate my story. Right. So, yeah. so tell us about. You know, I don't know if you have any more. I know he's working on a new CD. Do you have any more projects with Still Win? I do. I do have another project with Still Win. Um, we are leaving the stage for a second, but we're turning um, one of the stage play script into a movie. Wow. So I've I've been working with some producers, and we're rearranging some things, and that's going to be 2017's project. Wow. So th this is this is scary for me because when that's it comes to stage, exciting. I'm like, oh, I got that, but mm -hmm. I don't know too much about film. But it's it's going to be a great adventure, I believe. Wow. Yeah, it's a great adventure because also you have two girls that are also yes. very talented. It just runs in the family. <laughs> yeah. That's super yeah. great. <laughs> All right, I just want to say I'm so glad that you came to be with us today. And I have to say to the audience, we bought some CDs. <laughs> and we are going to share them with you so you can also enjoy our Anthony's great voice. Not just awesome. for our theme, <laughs> awesome. but the other songs also for your enjoyment. That's awesome. We are going to go to break. And as we go to break, we are going to listen to another voice cont contestant, which is Shalia Fearing. And she's going to sing us to the break. Stand tall, be proud, and let your voices. Let them know who we are and our choices. And one day we won't have to sing this chorus. Waiting for my chance to set us free. Waiting for a day when you can be you and I can be me Waiting for hope to come around Waiting for the day when hey is lost and love will be found Waiting for a change I'm so tired of waiting on a change Ooh. I'm tired of waiting on a change. Yeah, I'm tired of waiting on a change. When I was young, I would look in the mirror. Didn't see them, and now I couldn't be clearer. When Cooking Up Advice returns, Dr. June and the ladies of loveliness will play makeup or breakup. Will there be a consensus or a difference of opinion? Cooking Up Advice will be right back.
And so we're back and Zach has cooked us up a dish and now we are going to dish out advice. Hi ladies. Hello. Hi. How are you? I'm fantastical. How are you? Fabulous. Hey Zach. Hey, I actually got one more surprise. Oh, the grapefruit that I love. Yes, this grapefruit foam. Woohoo! So this is the foam. This is actually. Oh my God, it looks like foam. <laughs> There. He said it was foam. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastical. <laughs> Zach, we want to say thank you thank again you. for the crispy. Wait, wait, I have to taste it. How is it? Mm. Cooked? Good? Mm. Mm. She's smiling. That's a good sign. That's a good sign. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm like, <sighs> so, do we want to answer the audience questions first or do we want to do makeup or breakup? Makeup or breakup. Make up. Make up. All right, More here fun. we go. For fun. All right, here's the first question. I started dating the class clown mm. when we were in college. A class clown. The class clown. Oh. I married one, actually. Oh, there you go. <laughs> we had a lot of fun, but he was always smart and did good in school. So he was a smart class clown. Was her husband a smart class clown? At time. At time, okay. At time. <laughs> Which is typical. Mm -hmm. We graduated and have decent jobs, but he's still a clown. I want a little more maturity, but he's a really great guy and has always been nice to me. But the clowning is getting on my nerves because now we're supposed to be adults. Makeup or breakup? Okay, so wait. Makeup before we answer this, breakup. there are tons of comedians who are married. Yeah. Happily married. Yeah, so there are just some things you have to deal with. Mm -hmm. So you know what I'm going to pick. But are they the class clown just because they're, you know what I'm what saying? A comedian is, a, is the class clown. Yeah. I would say makeup, but I'd also say if he clowns around too much, it's not good. Comedians are smart too. They are smart. Would she like to be bored? Right. Okay. Because well, then that may lead to other things. Okay. Like a divorce. I'm not the devil. <laughs> <laughs> Are they married? Did it say that she married him? Yeah. No, she said she oh, married him. Oh, she married him. Oh, sorry. See? Happily married. Happily married. Happily married. See? Happily married. And she's happily married. married. Best friend keeps me happy and makes me laugh. It makes you laugh. There you go. Right? A man who's mature. We need to stop her no, before she yes, says I do. She thinks the grass is greener on the, <laughs> on other, the other side. side. There you go. She's okay. going to get that other grass and notice it's just as brown. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Then she'll go back and say, I need somebody to make me laugh. Right. Well, you know, they say that women like a guy with a sense of humor. That's right. They do. That's what they say. They do. All right. Well, you know. Oh, I forgot to introduce you guys. Uh, They're probably like, who are these strange women? Uh, we're women, women, that like <laughs> <laughs> women who like to eat. Women who like to eat. Well, first we have our guest disher, Lady of Loveliness Jill, which is Zach's mom. Thank Ooh. you very much for having me. No, thank you. <laughs> and then we for have- For having him. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, for having him. <laughs> oh, for enjoying oh, the day. Oh, yes, for making it. You did good, mom. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And we have with us the gorgeous Sonia, who I always tell, you know, I can't stand her. Gorgeous, with or without the makeup. Oh, I don't, my husband it. thought she was a celebrity. He asked for her autograph. <laughs> so anyway, yep. Tim is too kind. He's yeah. too kind. She's not just gorgeous, she's also smart. She's an educator. Yes. And then we have Miss Barbara. She's also. <laughs> I'm the quiet one. <laughs> uh -uh. Don't let the smile fool you. But she's also really smart. She's an educator. She's math, so you know she's like mm -hmm. like the brains yeah, of the family. Right, yeah. But she's also my AFF, my after friend forever. Yes. Yes. Okay, our next question. D down to business. This is down serious business that we're business. doing. We're, we're helping people. We're changing lives here. Yes. After I broke up with my ex-boyfriend, um, I thought I was going to spend time alone. Then I met someone, and before I knew it, I was in another romantic relationship. I actually really like him, but I have never been out of a relationship before. I've never been by myself. Now I'm trying to decide if I should stay since I'm in a good relationship or should I go on my alone journey? That's what she calls it. So she's my, saying she doesn't uh, know herself? Well, that's what I was If you're contemplating this, why are you So you don't know yourself? Somebody. Well, you know, should they make up or break up? What do you want? What do you want? What do you want? Well. What? Make up to see. I disagree. And she should stay with him. Why? Because if she's happy in a relationship, then, you know, just let her enjoy her relationship. She cannot truly be goes. happy in a relationship. She doesn't know herself. Oh, she doesn't. 
You got to work on you. She said she's never been alone. She said she's never been alone, but she said he's nice and she's happy with him. What do you want? Great. The mailman is nice. Are you going to date him? <laughs> <laughs> I might date a mailman. You will not date him. If I wasn't, if, if I wasn't married. <laughs> What's right. wrong with the mailman? Well, how is she ever, yeah, how is she ever going to know who she is mm -hmm. yeah. if she's always been in a relationship? I, hey, I don't know. Usually I'm the one who says that, but I'm just like, hey, right. is she... <laughs> You gotta work on you and and be happy with you, you gotta, and then your relationship will flourish. That will. She's happy with the guy. Why can't she just be happy with the guy? You know, let it take its course or whatever. I think you have to complete yourself first. You know what? And then right. complete another chapter with. That's great advice. But you know what? Some people, and I don't think that they, that we should feel bad about them. They feel like they need to have, so they don't like to be alone. You know, so she's saying that, but obviously she doesn't like to be alone, which is why she jumped into another relationship. Okay. And just, so when that one ends, mm -hmm. that's where she will she be. She's be on this constant alone. continuum. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not. She'll meet somebody else. I don't so know. this is going to be her continuous cycle. Yeah. Good luck. I tried to help you out in your relationship. There's nothing I can do. I'm sorry. It's three against <laughs> one. Okay. So <laughs> we had some audience questions, and I told them that you would give your opinion, your advice. Absolutely. Okay. So we had Pat, number one, and Pat is having a problem with her daughter mm -hmm. because she is about to leave the nest and I guess she doesn't want to be an empty nester and she's like what do I do how do I deal with this what are you going to do when Zach is <laughs> learn how to cook <laughs> <laughs> poor thing you <laughs> actually you know what I've actually I have three kids so Zach's my youngest so my wow. daughter is 17 you're about to get to that point exactly exactly and I I've actually told my kids they're welcome to stay with me forever. <laughs> wow. um, I don't, you know, it's as a as a mom, I can't even think of the day when my kids leave home. But wow. at the same time, I understand it's so important right. for them to become their own person. Right. So as much as I hate it, I think I have to let them do it. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm just gonna start working out some more, taking care of me, myself, you know, because you never do that, right? And, and enjoy my class clown. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's about it. Now, I know someone who has two kids, and she's like, you know what? When they're 18, I'm going to have their suitcases packed. <laughs> <laughs> their, their room remodeled. Their room <laughs> remodeled. <laughs> okay, well, Pat, you know, there you go. You have to kind of prepare yourself. That's what it was. Separation. She wasn't prepared for her Separation. daughter to be gone yet. Mm -hmm. Okay, what about the opposite one? The one who oh. graduated from yeah. college and now she's back that one, with her mom. That one is hard. Mm -hmm. That uh. one is hard because sometimes when you graduate from college, you do have to go home. Mm -hmm. Yeah. At least just for a few yeah, months. Exactly. And it's so different. It's, wanna, different. it's different It's different than visiting for two weeks over Christmas break right. or Thanksgiving yeah. break or something or a month. When a you back. have to stay and then they're thinking, mm -hmm. hey, my baby is yeah. back. And so you need to be in the house at midnight. And you're like, I'm 23. Oh, <laughs> so I need to be in the house at what, five? I mean, I don't know. Which, which one? is it I don't know um that's hard but it, it I think you were right that communicating with the parents is, is a mm -hmm. is the best way to go I didn't mm -hmm. have to do that because I left at 17 and I went far far away so they could not find me oh my god <laughs> <laughs> oh my god well, or did or were they really like the one I told you about had your suitcase at the door I'm no, just they saying wanted me to stay. they wanted me to stay I'm like, I'm thinking no. no. Well, I want you to stay. Don't don't no. go far, far away I, from me. Well, you have to sometimes if you know you have parents that coddle. Yeah. Because you will never grow up. Were your pa parents like that? Were they coddlers? No, they, I just got everything I wanted. So it's not oh. a coddle situation, but I was spoiled. And so you have to, I realized it. And so I'm thinking... Yeah, the world is probably not like these people I live with. So let me you get out what? there. Then that means out. I need to talk to your fiance. Listen, I do not that. talk to him. <laughs> <laughs> Tell them about the T-shirt that you put on Facebook. What? I'm not spoiled. My what is it? My, my fiance, fiance just, just loves me. Oh my <laughs> god. Okay. What else? <laughs> okay. What was the last question? Somebody help me out here. Oh, about the lady um, changing, yes. careers. changing careers. Changing careers at 54. What okay, do you think? Yeah. Me too. 
has the limit. It keeps you, you're reinventing yourself. Yes. You're you're keeping it fresh and exciting. We all have to do it. We, I don't we, think we should I mean, put a time limit. Exactly. On things, right? oh, exactly. I'm, because I feel like I'm I'm 50. This is going to be mm. an issue. No, it's no. not. Okay, you define Can yourself. I just mentioned that um, Julia Childs. Mm -hmm. She did not start her cooking show until she was 56. Right. Well, ladies, thank you so much. We hope that we were able to help our audience viewers. Yes. And again, if you have any questions, just hit us up on social media. The lovely ladies and I will do what we can to answer your questions. Yes. And we're going to be right back with the Aptacious Moment. Yeah, so this was really good, wasn't oh, it? Yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. I like that. I like that grapefruit foam. It's, it's awesome. Yeah, I know. And it's time for our Aptacious Moment. We talked a lot today about families and relationships. And I just want to say, whether your family is near or far, be it your children, cousins, even friends that are considered families, doesn't mean that you are not in their hearts and that you do not carry them in your hearts. So cherish your families, regardless of the situation, and be happy to let them move forward and allow yourself to grow as well. I want to thank everyone for joining us today, and I hope that you have aptacious families and an aptacious day. It's gonna be all right. It's gonna be all right.